Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of React Roundup. This week on our panel, we have Paige Niedringhaus. Hey, everybody. TJ Van Toll. Hey, everyone. I'm Charles Maxwood from devchat.tv. I just want to tell people real quick about React Native Remote Conference. It's going to be a three-day online conference in July and React Remote Conference, which is going to be a three-day conference in August. So uh, go check those out. Probably going to start uh, collecting speakers here soon for those. So yeah, should be fun. Uh, React Native Remote Conference, we actually have Chris Shadow who helped get React Native coming to speak. So anyway, we have a special guest this week, and that's Megna. Megna, do you want to say hello and introduce yourself? Yeah, hello everyone. I'm Meghna. In my real proper name is Dr. Meghna Shravasta. I'm a dentist turned software developer. I work as a software developer in Berlin, Germany. And I'm here to share my journey, like how I transitioned my career from dentistry to software development. Hey folks, are you trying to figure out how to stay current with React Native? Maybe you heard the Chain React conference was canceled and you're a little bit sad about that. Well, I borrowed their dates and I'm doing an online conference. So if you want to come and learn from the best of the best from React Native, then come do it. We have people like Christopher Shadow from Facebook. He's going to come and he's going to talk to us and answer questions about the origins of React Native. We're also going to have Gant Laborde from Infinite Red and several of the panelists and past panelists from React Native Radio. So come check it out at reactnativeremoteconf.com. Dot com. That's reactnativeremoteconf.com. Oh, now I feel bad because, yeah, I left off the doctor. My, my dad was the dentist. And so whenever I do anything and refer to him at all, my mom would get... It's funny. My mom was the one that was militant about the doctor. I have to say doctor, <laughs> you know. They, they cheaped out and had me Photoshop up some wedding announcements for my sisters, right? And it has to say doctor. So, so I apologize. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I specifically said my name is me. <laughs> and <laughs> I introduced myself with that name. But here, since it's about my journey, that's why I yep. wanted to emphasize it. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, when we think about dentists, you know, we think about these successful people, uh, either self-employed or maybe they work for a dental clinic somewhere. So they don't necessarily own the business, but they're highly educated. So what makes you decide, okay, you know what, dentistry, not for me anymore. Let, let's, let's go learn how to write code. Okay, so, okay, so let's uh, get back in time. I am a pass out of year 2013. Like I graduated with Bachelor of Dental Surgery from India. And I, I worked for a couple of years, like I worked for four years in different hospitals, clinics, got associated with several NGOs too, to treat some poor patients, some underrepresented patients who have no privilege to medical aid. Yeah, things were going pretty good in my dental career. I also got engaged in writing some papers, medical papers related to some advanced medical technology, some diabetology themes and all. But there, there came a time around in 2017 when things felt very mundane to me. Like, okay, I'm getting up, I'm going to a clinic, I'm solving the patient, like I'm solving the issues of that patient, fixing the crowns, doing filling, doing RCT, making a like, implant. So it, it felt mundane. And uh, my partner, he is a software developer himself. So I used to see him, he had very flexible lives. Like if he wanted to took a day off, he can, he can work from home, he could move anywhere. He can go to vacation. He could even on a vacation, he could open his computer. He could still work there. And these things were not for me. Like I need to be like, I, I need to be always available at my clinic or hospital. The flexibility to move was very less. And that's when I felt that this is a very a tied up job. Like, although I'm getting all the respect and of course, being a doctor is a very noble profession, but I'm not getting that satisfaction to live my life fully. What if I want to move the country? What if I want to explore other regions? And since this medical career is very associated with legal permissions and is your license recognized in the other countries or no, that's why it, ha it had some constraints to move 
and that's how i decided that okay maybe it's time to look up for several other options and programming was a a uh, very approachable decision for me since i told that my partner was a software developer so seeing him things got stuck in my head that okay this seems very feasible career and i also used to hear from him that there are several good uh, programmers who are self taught who haven't gone to a college and uh, although it's a really tough field but it is possible to learn it on your own so i thought okay in my free time maybe i could spend time on learning, learning. Maybe I gave a very long answer, but yeah, it's a it's a very touchy topic for me. No, no, I think it's it's a fascinating story, especially for like I I've had the the sort of very vanilla programming thing where I I did that straight out of school, had like a college education for it, and so hearing a totally different perspective is is fascinating for me. I'm curious what your next steps were, so. When you sort of made the decision to do this, what what sort of tools did you use to teach? Like, what what, what were your next steps of of sort of ramping up and trying to get more involved? Yeah, so like things started in two thousand seventeen, as I told. Like, I was at that time I was working. I was still working as a dentist, and during the evening, I used to. I started first with Python since I I did basic research of okay, what is computer programming like i had no clue i i just did like i had very basic introduction to computers till like class 8 and then even in my high school and my college i never did it i i never i thought that okay i'm not good in maths i am good in biology so i'll go i'll learn about human body the anatomy the pharmac the pharmacology medicine and everything maths is not for me but it was a misconception so i i just first it started with okay what is computer programming i learned basics about what's network what's response request i understood okay what fields are there in software development i i chose python to play around on several sites because i i found python very close to english so if you could understand english you could understand the python syntax so that's how i started in 2017 and uh, yeah but i was not much serious because i was still in a full time job so i didn't had i had very less time but like uh, my and my partner's destiny had something else planned so in 2018 we got an opportunity to move to berlin and we moved here from india and that's when I got unemployed <laughs> because I my license was no longer recognized here so now I had all the free time because uh, I had to learn advanced german if you want if one has to continue any field other than it they have to learn the native language so there were language constraints i have to clear some approbation medical exams i have to clear some medical licenses again so now i was doing all of that but since now i had a lot of free time so now i got really serious into this programming business so how did you end up transitioning from python to javascript because back end front end is quite different <laughs> <laughs> Yeah so after coming here then i started exploring other options i found that okay like i was losing motivation very soon in python maybe because i i don't have computer science background i wanted an immediate feedback loop like i i was very impatient like i wanted to see the results if i do some syntax mistakes i i used to think that i'm the foolish one so my my partner is basically a back end developer that's why he first uh, introduced me to python but then i realized that hey what is this ui thing let's try it and that's how i explored free code camp and it has a very interactive platform like on the left you see a problem on the right you could solve it so the feedback loop was very image because whatever you you write the solution you write you could immediately get that okay you have solved the problem or you didn't so it was very fun and interactive and since i had a little creative side i i belonged to like a dental field so i used to make molds do dental impressions so i had the creative side so i thought that yeah maybe this ui thing is making some some sense like at least i'm not that foolish there is certain certain area of a software development field where i could really enjoy 
So I, I dived into that. And plus, I also researched on Stack Overflow the most popular languages. Like, am I taking a risk by learning JavaScript? And I found that oh, JavaScript was on top. Like, it's everywhere. It's on back end, front end, desktop apps, mobile apps, everywhere. So I was like, OK, it's not a bad deal. That's how I, I at least made a plan. OK, uh, let's leave Python behind. Let's learn JavaScript. So, you know, you, you mentioned JavaScript. I, I want to dive in a little bit more on this. Why, why React? Was it just because of Free Code Camp or what, were there other reasons why you picked React instead of something else? No, like I, I just did Free Code Camp till, the, till some advanced level of JavaScript. I didn't do the React courses from there. Actually, when I really got interested into JavaScript and I, I understood what I'm doing, I understood the whole concept of content development. I then uh, realized that, OK, now I need to pick up a framework to, to solidify my portfolio. Like I built several projects with vanilla JS too, but I thought that, OK, I need to pick a framework. And I did my research that, OK, which technology is in demand? And I would suggest that if you're really like, if you're serious, that you want to make it as a career, you need to find out which technology is demand, uh, like has a high demand in your area so that you could uh, get a job later words. And since React has a high demand, plus of, like, okay, React and Love You, all, all three of them are quite popular, but React has a very high demand. Plus I found that, okay, learning curve is also not much big because I found that React is quite like writing JavaScript. The React API is very limited. Rest, you write the JavaScript code only. So that's how I dived in React. And uh, I really enjoy it. Like. Fortunately, all the job getting till now, everywhere I'm just writing React. So it's 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 cool. It's 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 getting like better and better with every version upgrade. So it's nice. You mentioned free code camp. I'm curious if there's any other learning resources, like having gone through the, your process, what you would recommend to others, like if there's any specific courses or programs or, th or things you think others uh, in a similar boat would be interested in. When I initially started, I started with both Free Code Camp and Code Academy. Like both are really good for beginners, I think. And once you get like comfortable that okay, you understand what this puzzle is all about, what this web development is all about, then you need to make some real projects to understand the things better. And then I bought several courses from Udemy too, because I found the, there are many, like really many, many courses out there which are excellent and very economic. And yeah, I, I chose a self-taught route. Like I, I don't want to take, take a risk of spending money in a boot camp and later, what if I didn't get a job? Like it was, it was a risk, it was a calculated risk. So I thought that, okay, I have a degree in my dental field. I could pursue it ahead, but whatever I want to do in my as a hobby or in my part-time, that I'll just do completely free. So I I I chose very like I all the learning resources were either free or they were very economic. So I also refer through Traversy Media courses on YouTube. They have like numerous really good courses on web development. And uh, I did some Udacity courses also. There are some free courses. I, I, however, would say that the learning style for everybody is different. Like I found myself that I'm more of a visual learner. Like I learn more that way. However, after following along with the tutor, I also enhance some features on the app which I create. But I'm more of a visual learner. But there are also courses like EDX offers a CS50 course, which is a computer science, computer science foundational course. And I would also recommend to do that for beginners, like if you're really starting it from scratch. So that you could you could understand, you could make a foundation like what you are learning. You should you should get the concepts clear. What are data structures? What is the algorithm you need to solve? So how long did it take you of learning on your own before you decided to start applying for jobs? And how how is the job search when you're getting started? I'm curious because I I'm also I'm not self-taught, but I did a boot camp. I don't have the traditional computer science background, and I remember applying to tons and tons and tons of job postings 
without a lot of traction, at least in the in the beginning. It, it's really hard. It's really hard. Well, I I don't want to uh, mention a number of how long it took because I I think that everybody's journey is different and it just gives like irrational pressure to other person that oh that person did it in six months that person did it in ten months so it's it's unrealistic and I think it it doesn't matter because when you are when you apply in the job nobody asks that hey did you code for thousand hours did you do for fifteen hundred hours so it it doesn't matter but to answer this I would just say that I quit many times like I I had my partner at home he is a back end he couldn't help me much in front end <laughs> however he is now from me he has learned react so he is now a full stack <laughs> but uh, initially he couldn't help me much so yeah so i i like quit many times like i started in 2017 with python i quit it in like two weeks i think i thought ah it's just a hobby then from 2018 i started and that time i started seriously like i had no job that time. I was just doing this and I, I was blocked. Like I thought, okay, I have to reside in Germany now. I don't have any other career option. I am exploring my dental thing, but it might take me two years or more than two years to clear up my license. So now I have two years and either I go join as a barista or I it, like engage, like I am privileged that I'm like financially secure at this time so I can utilize that time to learn so I would I would say that it, it got possible in eight months but it, it's it's not like I became a hero or a ninja in eight months so it, it's just that Berlin is like a another Silicon Valley of Germany so I got a opportunity so yeah and to answer how the interview process was like I understand it it's not easy especially for beginners it's not easy like I also applied to tons of jobs like I I don't remember I guess more than 50 60 jobs mm -hmm. and uh, just I I used to read the description I used to not read how many years of experience they need because there is no job posting which says that they want zero years experience or one year experience. There's always five years, eight years, seven years. So I just never used to read it. And like most of my resumes were not even filtered. They, they didn't even give me any emails. And like I, I think like less than five, I got like a revert from less than five of them. And the company from where I started, like I applied as a proper software developer role. It was a mid-level role, I think. But they 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 really they gave me a take-home assessment. They did on-site. They did a really intensive interview process. But at the end, they were like, oh, we are looking for more experience. And I was like, what? Like I, I did everything. Like I I felt that okay, you could have said it earlier. In the final round, it felt really bad. And that time I I became very Blunt and I negotiated with them that hey, like I am really learning. You could see my GitHub. Like I'm very productive. I'm building these things. Yeah, uh, what do I need to do to get better at it? Or are you having any internship opportunities? Because I don't know how to break in the industry. So that's how they they instead of offering me a job, they offered me an internship. However, in Germany, it's a paid internship, so it's good. It's a win-win for both of you. But I negotiated, I converted my role as a, instead of a software developer, uh, converted it into an internship. And that's how I began the journey. I'm curious, throughout the, as you interviewed with different companies and looked around, how often do you think the, the your basically, your your lack of like a, like a quote unquote traditional background, do you think hurt the cause? And I, I guess I'm sort of asking this because you know, there's there's a big debate in the software development world of whether like if you are someone especially a younger person that's that's considering your options today as to whether to go down the like more traditional college or university path or to try to self teach and break in yourself i'm curious what sort of advice you'd have for people that are in that sort of position today well i i would i won't belittle college degree of course it's it's important like if you 
have this privilege that you could go you have you are wise enough that in your young age you realize that hey you like computers you want to make career in it and you want to pursue a degree it's it's good for you but if you are not that privileged you don't need to take a huge loan on your head and then go like explore other options like i i see that on twitter like most of the very payments developers are quite active on twitter and i found most of them are self taught or if not self taught then like either they have they went to boot camp or they they did it some other modes but not a traditional college degree so you need to explore the option however i won't say that college degree is not at all important of course it adds value and like if you belong to some like some third world country and you want to move to let's say us or somewhere else maybe you need uh, those degrees for visa process too so it's of course it's important to have a degree and of course for your later part of growth for getting higher promotions and everything for making the interviewers feel that yeah you you know more you need a degree but it's it's not a hard for requirement that to to get the to get all the growth you 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 definitely need it it's not the case in fact i would say that instead of like investing 4 years completely studying you could also you know on a part time you could start doing some freelancing work or some pick up some side job so that it adds the experience because at the end even when you just get grad- graduated even then they ask for experience in the job advertisement so what about the freshly graduated student they're like what we are just studying <laughs> we haven't done a job So yeah, it's a catch twenty two situation. Whenever I'm stuck on what to learn next, a lot of times I just go back to the fundamentals and think about how I can make those things more automatic. The reason is is because then when I focus on the fundamentals, I'm able to actually level up in all the other areas that I'm trying to learn. So I teamed up with Kyle Simpson to focus on the fundamentals of JavaScript. Kyle wrote the books you don't know JS yet, and his getting started ebook goes over just the fundamental fundamentals, so to speak. of JavaScript. And we're putting together a 30-day challenge where you can actually level up on this stuff, get it down pat, and then you can go and learn all of the other things that you're doing that are based on these things. So, if you go sign up for the challenge, you can do it at devchat.tv/bookcamp. That was Kyle's idea. You can get the following as part of the challenge. You get daily training videos which are worth about 150 bucks. You get daily exercises and homework which again are about worth about 97 bucks especially with the coaching that we give you around them. You get access to the private Slack channel which is worth about 20 bucks. You get access to a premium podcast series that Kyle and I are going to record. It's an eight-part podcast series where we talk through all the pieces of the book. You'll get three Q&A calls per week and that puts you at about a $1,779 value. And what's great is you also get then the audio from the podcast, you get the video from the training, you get the experience from working and you get the visual reading learning from the book. So you're going to learn this in multiple ways. Once again, go sign up at devchat.tv/bookcamp. devchat.tv/bookcamp and you can get it for $197. If you use the code JSJabber, you can get it for $147 instead. So go check it out right now, devchat.tv/bookcamp. Yeah, I think the hardest part at least for me because I do have a college degree, it's just not in computer science, it's in business and and marketing. The hardest part by far was just getting that first job, getting them to give you a chance to look at past your resume and the lack of experience and just see that you were willing to you you know, you'd put in the hours, you'd put in the time learning, you just needed that first break. but i've found that since getting my first job and i'm still with the company that i started with home depot i'm now a senior software engineer i went from a contractor for 6 months kind of as a junior developer then converted to a full software engineer and then got promoted last summer to senior you know it just you start to learn and you just if you're really driven and want to get to that next level you're just going to to start to rise and um it's it's really it's just getting off the ground but now even though i don't still don't have a computer science degree and have no intention of going back to school for it you know i get so many emails from other developers and from recruiters who are looking to who obviously don't care that i don't have a computer science degree 
who have seen my skills or have seen what I've been talking about and want to talk to me or hire me or, or do something like that. So it's really, it's really just that first job. And then once you're in and you're into the industry and you've got a little bit of experience, even it really doesn't seem to matter anymore from my personal experience. Even, even I feel so like I, I just shared about that, how I got the internship in my third month, like it was a three months internship. And in my third month, they were transforming it into a junior position. And I was confident in my third month that, okay, I know enough. And it was a very early stage startup. So I don't have enough of mentors and not a very, uh, like not a very big office with a uh, big team. I would say it's, it, they were a great employer because they gave me the first opportunity. But yeah, li- the resources were very limited. So I thought in my third month that, hey, maybe I can still apply. Like, okay, I got a job safe, but I can still apply. And I just got three months experience. And I got plenty, like I just updated on LinkedIn that, hey, I'm doing this from this. And recruiters don't care if you're doing a job or an internship. There were several, plenty of messages. And that's how I got this uh, current job where I'm working. And the first round was with HR. And the HR just asked me what I'm doing in the job. They just cared that, okay, she is not self-learning. She is doing some production code. So it's, it was enough for them. So yeah, the first, first thing, the first break is the hardest. And then things become smoother. Nobody, nobody then later, nobody asked that if you have the degree on it. Yeah, I just want to chime in here too. I mean, it sounds like, you know, you did the work, you got out there, you put yourself in a position to 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 let them know that you were at least worth considering, right? And then you got the internship. I wrote a book on how to find a job last year. I'm actually having it edited because I tried to do an audio book and I wasn't happy with what I was reading. So, but but that's a side note. One thing that I found though is that if you go out of your way to get to know people in the companies you want to work at, a lot of times that makes it easier too, because then at least they're like, you know what? I talked to Magna. She seems like she's smart. She seems like she'll work hard. She seems like, you know, and so they can tick off all of the things that aren't necessarily technical skills. And then they can say, and given that she's done all this work on her own, she's doing pretty good, right? On the technical skills. And so that just demonstrates to them, you know what? If we bring her in for three months, we're going to have a really good idea of whether or not we want her. And it's not that much of a risk because it looks like she's the kind of person we want. And so, uh, you know, just just walking through that process, it sounds like you did a lot of those things as well. Yeah, it's interesting too to me because I've also met a lot of people with a similar, like Paige, you tell the story of having a a marketing background in college. I've it's amazing throughout the industry how many people I've met with a similar experience. So I'm kind of wondering because I'm thinking of a a previous coworker of mine had a degree in music. He he went to to school for music for several years, and then at some point he came over to technology. But what I found is that strangely, like some of his skills from that that musical background actually did transfer. Like he was able to build like a lot of his apps that he would build, like samples, were these these amazing like things with like web audio and things because he had this deep musical experience. And so my question to you, which is a little oddball of one, but do you think your background in dentistry actually helped um, you, whether it was being more familiar? I mean, you have to, I, presumably you went to school for a long time for, to learn to be a dentist. So like learning experience, writing experience, I'm curious if any of those skills you think helped you break into the, the coding world. Well, uh, I would just say that technically, no, things are far different. Like, okay, I I still get that creative satisfaction. Okay, I'm building a crown here. I'm building a web app. So that thing, <laughs> that thing uh, resembles. And other than that, I would say that I'm the uh, most empathetic one in my team. <laughs> like, all are all are like men. And sometimes we are in a meeting room, there are some disputes and everything. So I I work on a regular position. So people hear me out, people hear me out. Sometimes I, uh, the product manager takes me to the stakeholders, we gather the requirements and everything. So it's, it's, it's like, I would say I, I have more of people's skill, like how to end up the disputes and all, but logically I, I won't say like, yes, it's my dream to <laughs> create some app 
which could do something digitally with the truth <laughs> maybe maybe a person could vis- a user could visualize let's say they want to have some tooth jewelry and they could visualize how they could look like on their on their tooth or not but yeah technically it's far different but you you get more if you feel that if you need to work in a team if you need to work in a company it's it's more than just code it's also about good cultural fit so it's about that that okay you you have a diverse group of people with empathetic emotions they could solve the problem they could they could make the entire team work together instead of people taking up extracting of their task and then fighting on I would completely second that. There's not a lot from what I learned in business that's really directly applicable to what I'm doing today, but just being able to work in teams, to communicate effectively, to speak to people of all different technical abilities or understandings, I think has really helped me excel faster in my position than maybe some people who have the more uh, traditional, just computer science background. Yeah, and I I also feel that since my team knows that I'm a doctor, so they gave me that. Okay, even though I'm like technically behind them, but they listen to me, so it's it's cool that okay, at least I'm get, getting that respect. They are not treating me like a junior. <laughs> so yeah. So Magna, what's a what's a typical day like for at your current company? Like, do you work just on front end all the time? Do you do some full stack? Do you have a big team? What kind of stuff do you do normally? Okay, so I work at Auto One Berlin. It's a digital automotive platform company, and uh, I work in the internal tools and apps. Like we build tools for engineers, we build tools for some HR managements, and uh, it's a small cross-functional team. I think around six six developers. and there are like two front ends two back end one team lead and one qa so i mostly i work on the front end side with all the latest front end technologies like we migrated when i joined there was one, like there are five or six products in my which uh, our team has to handle and one of the product is written in like obsolete react means react before 16 like react 15 point something so we migrated it into the modern world and currently we are rewriting the new files in typescript so and uh, there was enzyme before now we are doing react testing library the good thing is that since it's internal tools that's why we get to experiment with all the buzz things with all the modern things up front like i don't need to wait that okay what if things will break or is is this technology still Stable and also, we get to experiment with the modern things very soon. And since there are just two devs, me and the other one, so I get to do very challenging tasks. Like no one assigns me what I need to do. Like I can choose any ticket. Like we we use Jira for tracking the work. Yeah, like we follow Agile. And there is like at ten a.m. There's a morning standup. There's a two week sprint. and everybody is focused everybody is very helpful and uh, i have good communication with back end developers also design team also however recently like since two months we are also building a app which is a full stack app so mm-hmm. it's uh, it's the back end is on node node and sjs so it's good to dive into new technology so i'm experimenting with the inter- like i'm very satisfied with the all the modern things i get to experiment with but yeah like in future i would uh, want to be more on the customer facing one so i have been in the customer facing ones but now i'm enjoying this and maybe later i'll again move into a more customer facing one yeah i found being on the internal applications is sometimes a little bit better cuz deadlines are less tight and there's less you know high priority there's a fire on the weekend at 5 o'clock please put it out kind of things cuz our our users are all internal to our organization as well yeah, yeah. <laughs> well deadlines are strict in my case but yeah this uh, this on call duty of things breaking on weekend this this is like this is negotiable like we see you okay, we'll manage it on monday <laughs> yeah <laughs> well one other question i have 
I have a bunch of other friends who are from India that have either moved to the U S or other parts of the world or are still there. And a lot of them have told me that, and, and I don't know if this is like a regional thing or what, but you know, so it may be different for you, but some of them have told me that a lot of the Indian moms want their kids to grow up to either be doctors or lawyers. Right. And so since, engineers. or engineers. Yeah. Okay. So, you, so you're good. I was going to ask, you know, was, was there any like family or cultural, you know, pushback to you're a doctor and now you're going to go do software or was that just, you know, nobody, nobody really batted an eye. Well, it's it's a it's a famous joke also nowadays for the whole world. <laughs> yeah, Indian moms actually say that. Yeah, like the current moms, the new generation mom don't force force that. But I don't know from where it all got started. But I found that Indian families, like the middle class families, give a high priority on studies for children and. Basically, in India, the high-paying jobs are engineering or medicine only. So they used to force that. So yeah, but now now things are getting really versatile. Like the newer generations are going into dancing, singing, becoming an artist. Yeah, now there are lots of options. However, my dad is like, when when I dived into it, my dad was like, yeah, you got one life. You need to become a doctor and an engineer, both. And I <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, some of my friends make fun of it too. So, yeah, that that's how it is. I, I even see, like, when I joined the company, I see there are a lot of, Indian engineers, so I found that okay, like Indian engineers are really very massive, like massive in proportion. I'm curious too. So now that you've been in the, the the software industry for a little bit, if you had to do like a little bit of a compare and contrast, like um, I'm curious, like and not that you pick which one you like more, but just like are there things that you enjoy more or less about each? Like are there things you miss about sort of the day-to-day of working as a dentist or things that you appreciate more in the software world? So the prime reason why I left dentistry behind was the flexibility to move. Like right now I'm in Germany. Let's say I want to move from Germany to some other country. If I was in dental profession, it was not possible for me. So this was the main reason. So, which I am really happy right now that, okay, like I, now because of this lockdown, I'm doing work from home and all those things. So the, these are really something very, I'm really grateful for, but something which uh, which I'm feeling bad. And it's it's really, it, it happened just a month ago that I started feeling bad and I'm missing the older profession. It's because when this lockdown happened, the medical people are the frontliners, so they are everywhere. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> people are not valuing me. <laughs> so that is the point that, okay, like even the dental professionals, like we study everything. We study the entire human anatomy so we could manage <laughs> all the things. Like we, we uh, studied the whole human medicine for five years if you're doing graduation. One more constraint in medicine was like, if, if you're really serious about medicine, you're doing the master's, you have to spend like a decade learning. Like you spend the entire 20s just mugging fat books, dealing with patients. But it's it's really, it's it's a it's a very respectable profession. It's, it's a very critical profession. Like if, if you do one thing wrong, your whole career is gone. And that's not the case in, in software development. You could crash the app, you could still survive, so it's fine. Yeah, like, it, I, I'm however really, like, I'm happy because of multiple things. Like I said that this work from home facility, I have also some future goals that I want to get a remote job or a freelance job, or I want to make my own name. Maybe I don't want to work under a company. So these are all possible only by software development. And when I was evaluating the other career options, I found that software development is almost equivalent 
in intellectual challenge like challenging you intellectually to medicine like it's not easy like earlier when my partner used to work on the black magic screen which we call id i used to think what is what rubbish is it <laughs> but now i understand it's not easy it's really not easy in fact in medical the technology is advanced like after a lot of time like after 5 years 2 years any any advancement takes a lot of that's why the corona vaccine is not invented because it takes a lot of time but this javascript world is mad like every week something new is out you have to start, I, i never started i think i never started this much in my medicine career as much as i'm starting now but yeah that that the joy of relieving a patient from a pain and they get happy that's that's some other satisfaction so yeah i i lost something to gain something else but i'm happy i'm not regretting that decision at all cuz i'm really growing from here i'm getting great opportunities i also have like i have acquired a great interest like earlier it it sound to me very it's still complicated but earlier like imposter syndrome used to hit me every other day i used to feel i am a fraud in the company you know but now it it feels like i belong here i could do things on my own i no more depend on a senior engineer to come and unblock me so it's getting better so what's the the part that you enjoy most about programming now well i would say that whenever i i solve some problem let's say a feature and i i solve it the the joy it gives it it it's really like it's it's been more than 2 years i've been programming and it's still the same it's still the same like even if it's some css related issue or if it's related to some some tricky react related issue or some docker related issue or any other thing related but the joy which i get i i feel like intelligent like i i boast to my friend and my both my friends are dentists so they hardly understand what i do i was then so it, it's cool or i could create some apps i could give them link hey play around so it's it's really nice like you could you could deploy it you could share it with your friends family they found you yeah you you can do stuff you they they make you more excited by telling you yeah you wanted to do some jig on your own and all so it's a very satisfying feeling and yeah i i said that at least my creative side is still getting fulfilled like it, during the dentistry also i was doing the creative side so it's still fulfilling so yeah my other option uh, other than uh, diving in software development was also at one point i thought maybe i should go for product management but i think that now product management is not too much for me because i i think that i i really like software development like after uh, spending so much of time i really enjoy the satisfaction buzz i get whenever i solve something it's it's really cool and especially i i love frontend I I don't think it's easy at all like this modern front end is not easy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm right there with you and I agree it's really satisfying when you finally figure out something that you've been working on for quite a while. <laughs> yeah, like my partner Kanshi he's a core backend guy, he's also a, a DevOps guy doing something with Terraform Kubernetes. I'm too early in my career to understand all this right now. <laughs> so he said you won't be able to understand it. So I just throw my web app at him or my mobile app at him and I'm like can you make it? <laughs> it's more yes, I am the more powerful one. <laughs> <laughs> That's convenient. <laughs> It's really heartwarming to share the journey with you all. Thanks. We're we're happy to have you share it with us. So is there anything you're working on now or anything that you're trying to learn or struggling to learn now? Currently, I'm focusing on learning the backend. Like I'm still sticking with JavaScript, so I'm just playing around with Node, Express, Next.js. But I want to be get better and better like a programming is endless so i just want to get more competent every day so I, my every day's challenge is to just learn pick one thing at a time so some one new thing every day and uh, i want to get more active in the community because i i didn't share this that 
since I, I chose set.root. That's why Twitter and this Twitter community, 100 Days of Code and Code Academy played a very significant role in my journey because I, I really used to sulk and uh, I quit it many times because I thought that I am dumb and I, I can't figure out things on my own. But when I followed those hashtags, there are a lot of code newbies out there and who are solving the exact same problem or who are struggling in the same issue. So you you feel like you're in a classroom. You are not learning alone. So it, it's really good. And now that I have uh, attended certain experience in this industry, I want to give back. So either in form of mentorship, I already do some mentorship, but I want to be more like, accessible with, for people and just tell them that it's possible. However, I won't say that everybody should just dive into software development. Dive only if you really like it. Like I would say first two months, just try out Precode Camp or certain other sites and just find out if you really like it. Like I, after realizing that I'm enjoying it, then only I, I really spend time in it. Awesome. Well, if people want to connect with you online and ask you other questions, where do they find you? Well, my Twitter handle is Hello Meghna. I'm quite active out there. And my LinkedIn is also the same, Hello Meghna. Awesome. Back when functional programming was making its resurgence, I found it really interesting that a lot of people were moving over there and it almost felt like it was on hype. And I didn't really understand the power of functional programming until I learned Elixir. Elixir is a functional programming language. It's built on the Erlang virtual machine, and it really does some interesting things and makes you build apps in a different way. But what's really fascinating about it is the speed of the applications, the ability to distribute work easily, and just how it manages the functional programming and all of the nice things about it so that you don't have to worry about side effects and a lot of the other things that come out of functional programming. Plus, pattern matching in Elixir is a killer feature. If you're looking for a new language that you want to learn that is going to make a difference for you and give you the opportunity to challenge some of your thinking and find a new way of doing it, Elixir is a great way to go. And we have a podcast now on Elixir called Elixir Mix. And you can find that at elixirmix.com. All right. Well, we're going to move into the picks section of the show. Let's have TJ start us off. I have have just one pick, a show called The Great on Hulu. It's a sort of fascinating concept because it's a comedy but it's a comedy that's sort of loosely historically based on Catherine the Great from Russia. So it's, it's really, really amusing because it's, it's, not, it's not so much historical. It's sort of a, just sort of a comedic spin on it, but it's super entertaining. Awesome. Paige, do you have some picks for us? I do. I just started a new series of books this week because I finished the last series that I was reading. And the first one is called Malazan, Book of the Fallen. It's a it's a high fantasy book series and it's a quite a long series but my husband has actually been reading them and recommended them to me because he's a big fantasy uh, and science fiction fan. So far so good. So I would say if you're looking for some new reading, definitely give this one a check. I'm always looking for new reading. <laughs> um, I'm going to throw out some uh, picks real quick. So I've gotten into the marketing game a little bit lately, especially for the remote conferences. And I already mentioned at the top of the show, the React Native and React remote conferences. Yeah, I just you know to get people over there, to be able to help more people out. You know, A lot of people kind of get this foul taste in their mouth when they talk about marketing. But if you're getting the word out about something that's going to help people, then, you know, so I ran across a challenge called the uh, One Funnel Away Challenge. And it's by Russell Brunson, who's from Boise, Idaho. So a few hours from here. And he, he and a couple of other folks have put together just this great program. And so I've been working through it. I'm actually in the prep week, which is mostly about mindset, which is really interesting as well. But I am really, really enjoying it. They give you a couple hours of video to consume and homework every day. To, to work through it. And so, yeah, that's the one funnel away challenge. But I've also been reading his books. I've read Expert Secrets before, but he also has .com secrets and traffic secrets, which are focused on getting people to your website and getting them to follow through and convert or purchase whatever it is you're selling. I'm going to be doing some of this as, as offers to some of our sponsors. And then I'm also going to be doing this as well to just get the word out about some of the other stuff we're, we've got going on. So, you know, finding people that need 
you know, or trying to find their first job, like we talked about earlier, point them to the book that I wrote uh, because I feel like that'll really help them out. Or the same thing with the conferences. So I'll put links to all that stuff in the show notes and I'll let Megna throw in some uh, picks as well. Megna, do you have some things you want to shout out about on the show? Some picks? Do I need to tell about some some good reads or any series which I'm watching? Yeah, it could be TV shows. It could be movies. It could be books. It could be a tech tool that you love. It could be, I mean, anything. Yeah, so since this lockdown has happened, <laughs> I'm like binge watching Netflix also on the holiday. So I am really into this new show called Into the Night. I have recently started like two days back. And it's, it's really good. Cool. Um, yeah, if you put a link in the chat, we'll get the link in the show notes. And uh, yeah, thanks for coming. This was really fun. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and wrap this one up. Till next time, folks, Max out. Bandwidth for this segment is provided by Cashfly, the world's fastest CDN. Deliver your content fast with Cashfly. Visit C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com to learn more.